In today's interconnected world, we face complex challenges. And at the heart of them, there is one element that Part of them, there is one element that connects us all. Water. Every year, we use more water, yet global availability is constant. If we don't act soon, by 2050, water scarcity may threaten up to 5 billion people. In 2015, the global community agreed on a unified agenda to solve these challenges. These common objectives are called the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. These goals should be achieved by 2030. Like water, they are all integrated. We can achieve them if we come together to manage our limited water resources like never before. That's why UNIP, UNIP GHI Center, CAPNET, and GWP have joined forces to establish the SDG6 IWRM support program, a platform to accelerate and coordinate effective action. Different stakeholders, but together they have a common goal, to understand the water-related challenges, design viable solutions for them, and implement integrated responses to help countries achieve the SDGs. Joining the dots between countries facing similar challenges helping them to act locally, achieve their national targets, and link them to a global movement. Come together, be a part of the solution. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you are right now. Welcome to this learning exchange on IWRM action planning to accelerate progress on SDG6. We're very grateful for your participation today. My name is Colin Heron. I'm the Global Coordinator for Water Solutions for the SDGs at the Global Water Partnership, and I will be facilitating today's event. Uh, we have a very exciting agenda, and we have uh, some housekeeping rules to make sure all of us are um, able to participate. So if you can go on to next, please. We will. Um, for those that need interpretation in Spanish, we will have the option available. Uh, if you click on the um, interpretation icon, which is down the bottom right of your screen, then you will be able to have interpretation from English to Spanish. And I'm going to say that in Spanish as well. Si necesitan interpretación, hay un botón debajo este en la pantalla. Uh, dice interpretación en forma de un globo mundial. Uh, si dan clic en, esa, en ese botón, van a tener acceso a la traducción al español, al castellano. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. All participants will be muted, uh, except for the designated speakers and the rapporteurs from the breakout groups. If any of you have any comments or questions, please feel free to use the chat function during the session. We will try to answer all of the questions during the session. If there are any questions we can't answer during the session, we will make sure that we answer them afterwards. And if you do have any te technical difficulties with your connection, uh, please feel free to reach out to our tech hosts, uh, Patricio Rullier or James Wachira in the chat, or um, uh, you could also refer to the how-to guide on the CapNet website. So we have some expectations and some objectives for today's session. In particular, we would like to make sure that we are helping countries to better face their sustainable development challenges with IWRM as a connector between different agendas. We would also like to get a better understanding of how these, this SDG 6 IWRM support program can assist countries to develop and implement national action plans on IWRM. We also hope to understand the challenges from the national level when developing and implementing these action plans. And we will hear some case studies from countries that have been supported, as well as hearing from all of you on your experiences or your expectations. And uh, finally, we will 
uh, try to understand the level of interest in continuing this dialogue beyond today. This is the first of at least two online events that we will have this year, but between events, we also hope to keep this dialogue open. So for today's event, we have a, a very tight agenda with a lot of activities, and uh, we will start with some opening words, uh, not just from myself, but also from our key partners at UNEP, the United Nations Environment Program. Um, if you can go on to next, please, Patricia. Then we also have um, a, a presentation on the SDG6 IWRM support program. We will hear some experiences, uh, one from Guatemala and the other from Vietnam, two countries that have uh, gone through this process of defining an IWRM action plan. Then we will give you the opportunity to contribute with your perspectives on the challenges and the solutions that are relevant at the national level. Um, reporting back from the breakout groups and then we will close uh, in one and a half hours. So uh, thanks very much for your attention. I would like to now hand over to um, our great partner at the United Nations Environment Programme, Dr. Joachim Harlin, who is the chief of the Freshwater Ecosystems Unit at UNEP. Joachim, you have five minutes, please. Joachim, sorry, you're muted. That's better now, right? Yes. Thank you. So, so thank you, uh, Colin, and uh, hello, Damian and friends. Uh, welcome to uh, <laughs> this uh, 2021 IWM Learning Exchange. It's, it's exciting to be with you. And uh, the first thing I want to do is to thank you all. Thank you for reporting on uh, SDG 651 uh, last year. Uh, actually, 171 countries reported, despite uh, very challenging conditions, as we all know. Now, if we add that with the first reporting round in 2017 and, and count the number of countries in total, we've had 186 countries that have reported on this indicator so far. That's almost 97% of all countries in the world. So we're starting to build up a, quite a, a good picture, at least globally, of what's going on. In 2017, we had an IWM average score of 49, and 2020, that went up to 54. So, so that is an increase of five units, but we have only nine years to go. And uh, how, how can we use these uh, results and findings to accelerate implementation? That's what we want to talk about today. So if we look at the, at the trend and, and, uh, and, and the time we have available, uh, we can conclude that we have to at least double the rate of implementation. So we have to step up our game. So what will that take? Well, we, it's clear that we cannot just continue as we've done. So business as usual is not really an option if we are to achieve this target. So what should we do then to, to break down silos and, and create more policy coherence? I'd like to hear that from you. And, and if we do that and, and we really get IWM implemented quicker, that will have positive effects, not only on SDG 6, but beyond SDG 6 quite convinced about that. We've seen that there are kind of, kind of common constraints across the globe, uh, some related to the constraint with finance and how do we mobilize more finance for IWRM implementation? And how can we engage a broader set of stakeholders, not just preaching to the choir? So we, this is what we need to talk about uh, and what new things can we try? So COVID forced us all to work differently uh, last year and even this year, and we, we maybe will be working differently for a long time. But perhaps this is an opportunity that we can, uh, you know, help us rethink the way that we engage and do things. Uh, maybe we can use uh, modern technologies to improve collaboration and, and, and actually reach broader and, and, and to, to other sectors and stakeholder groups. Let's discuss. Through the IWM support program that we're now running together with CAPNET and, and GWP, we are trying to use the IWM reporting uh, to catalyze national action. But we're also using these findings uh, 
to share experiences between countries. This is what we're trying to do today. And which in turn is a means of helping countries to advance more quickly. So, so I hope this uh, learning exchange uh, can be candid and we can be generous in sharing our experiences and our learnings, the bad ones as well as the good ones, towards that cause that we can help countries and advance more quickly. So thank you very much. And back to you, Colin. Thank you, Joachim, for those in inspiring words. Um, and that is indeed the challenge that we have in front of us. So uh, I would now like to uh, see if we can break the ice and understand the audience that we have with us today. So to take us through two quick exercises, I would like to hand over to our SDG program manager for Latin America and the Caribbean at the Global Water Partnership, uh, Carlos Martinez. So Carlos, over to you. Thank you, Colin. Um, good morning and what afternoon to all of you. Uh, we're going to do a couple of exercises using the polyp. And please, uh, if you will, write polyp.com slash GWP in your browser, or you can go just directly to the chat and click on the link that's being provided there. It will take you directly to, to the exercise. And the first exercise is, where are you from? Please tell us uh, by clicking on the map, the country where you are from. And that will let, uh, that will let us know the whole distribution of the participations that we have uh, in this event today. So don't forget to click on the country that you are from. Please, we're waiting for the answers. Remember, go to the chat. It, it will be easier if, if you go to the chat and click on the polet.com slash GWP link. Uh, yeah, we're starting to see some, some countries there, some marks from Central America, uh, a few from South America, and I see Europe, so Mark in Africa also. Uh, I don't see so much, or well, we don't have any marks. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have a couple of marks in Africa. And it looks like we have a very wide distribution of participants uh, during, the, during this event, and pro probably that's it reflects of what, uh, why GWP is a very wide, worldwide network. So please uh, don't forget to place your mark here so you can show you, your country is participating in this event. Carlos, I think we can now go to the next question, perhaps. Sure, sure. Let's go to the next question. And this question has to do with your role during the uh, monitoring and reporting process that was held uh, last year. The monitoring and reporting process of SDG 6.5.1. And what was your role? Please uh, select what uh, the role you feel uh, represent more your participation in this event. Uh, we are seeing that we have quite a few uh, GWP support network and focal points. And we have some quite few participants that were not related to the, these processes. And you're very welcome here to learn about these processes and to participate, helping getting this as a reality of a, a IWRM a, activities from now on. And we see a 46% of GWP support network. That means all the organizations that have base in the countries that support the activity of GWP national and regional level. And I think it is not moving much anymore. Donors, we have a 7% of donors, which is very important for all other stakeholders present. Uh, we, we can make the contacts here so we can uh, facilitate processes and 
see if there is a window of opportunity for future collaboration between stakeholder and the donor community here. Uh, I think it is not moving much. Uh, I think we can be here. Yeah, we leave I, it I, there. I, I think uh, I can leave it there. Back to you, Colin. Okay, thanks so much, Carlos. And it's great to see that we have such a wide geographical spread. I saw even some people in Asia Pacific uh, for whom it must be very late. So thank you so much for joining us at this time. And of course, as you can see, uh, a widespread of different stakeholder types as well, which is very encouraging for us to see. So now I would like to present to you the SDG6 IWRM support program, which you saw a little bit um, in the opening video, the, the first two minutes of today. And, uh, but now I would like to present it a little bit more formally. And as Joachim mentioned, the, the support program really takes its starting point with the monitoring exercise on SDG 6.5.1, which takes place every three years approximately, um, the first time in 2017. If you can go to next, please. Um, and the, the second time uh, last year in 2020, when many of you took part in the monitoring exercise. And that allows the challenges and opportunities at the national level for advancing on IWRM to be identified in a multi-stakeholder perspective. This is very important. Uh, we've seen that progress is needed, and but where exactly is it needed? This is something that is defined at the national level. Now, once those challenges have been defined, we help with the methodology that we have developed uh, countries to turn that into an action plan for IWRM in stage two. And we have already quite some experiences in terms of countries that are going through this process. And uh, by doing so, then we also help countries to implement those solutions. And we don't want an action plan just to be identified or developed. We want that to really be implemented in such a way that it feeds back into the monitoring exercise. And stage three then can support the stage one monitoring every three years and allowing us to see progress at the national level in those key areas identified. The next please, there we can see that this approach is very much needed because as Joachim mentioned, uh, the current rate of progress globally needs to be doubled. In some countries, in fact, it needs to be much more than doubled depending on the progress that's being made. Um, and 129 countries around the world are currently not on track to meet the 2030 target. Uh, next, please. If you can look at that target, in fact, you can see that we have made progress. Uh, we, you can see that uh, between 2017 and 2020, there is an upwards trend, but we need to really accelerate that uh, level of progress uh, if we are to reach 100% uh, IWRM implementation by 2030. Um, and in fact, uh, here you can see on the left how the progress has, has really uh, uh, been more, more countries in the middle, low or medium high range, um, more countries at the high range of IWM implementation. Next, please. So what, what is an IWM action plan? It's first and foremost a commitment from different stakeholders um, over a period of years, maybe three, four or five years, to advance on the implementation of those key areas identified at the, in the monitoring stage. Um, it should take the form of a limited number of high impact opportunities uh, or interventions which are really investment opportunities for different stakeholders from the public and the private sector. Um, it's important that despite the multi-stakeholder input, it should be led <clears throat> by national governments and in particular, uh, the ministry agency or commission that is in charge of uh, water resources management. And it should be supporting to the existing policy framework for IWRM, and it should be designed to help solve some of the country's greatest water-related challenges. It's really a problem-solving mechanism. 
So if we now go into the next slide, we can see uh, from the what, now the why. And we've always said that uh, integrated water resources management is at the heart of SDG 6. And SDG 6 is at the heart of all of the SDGs. Every single one of them depends upon the availability of water resources in quantity and quality. We cannot think of ending hunger or uh, sustainable life on land or urban development or combating climate change or uh, ending poverty without um, an integrated management of water resources. But also key is that IWRM will help us to reach the other global targets that we have set, uh, including the Paris Agreement, um, the CBD or the Convention on Biological Diversity, um, uh, combating desertification. And of course, uh, as Joachim mentioned at the beginning, we are in the process of hopefully now recovering from COVID-19 and water resources should be a part of all recovery plans. Next, please. Um, in terms of how, um, I'm pleased to share with you that we have uh, developed an IWM acceleration package, which is available on the website of the support program, which we will share in the chat uh, later on. We are also in the process of developing an online course on um, how to accelerate IWRM, and um, that course will be available towards the third quarter of this year and will be available in English, French, and Spanish. We, there is also a systems available from the SDG 6 IWRM support program for countries that are interested and willing to advance down this, uh, this direction. We have an IWRM action searcher, which is available to identify and to examine the actions that have already been identified by countries. And we are uh, designing a community of practice to continue this exchange of experiences and lessons beyond uh, this sort of global event. So if you go to next, please, you can see also the where. And we have already developed 10 IWRM action plans with countries in uh, a very broad geographical scope. Um, and we have two more that are currently ongoing. And we have uh, a long waiting list of countries with whom we are in conversations. Um, and if we can go to the next, you can see that our objective is to reach at least 40 national IWRM action plans by 2025. Um, and of course, this will require the engagement of all of you. So this is your opportunity. If any of you are interested, please join us on this journey. Uh, we hope to accompany you in your pathway towards sustainable development. Uh, as I mentioned, all of our resources that I mentioned uh, earlier in the presentation are available on the website, which you can see here on the screen, and that will be posted in the chat. And you can also write to us uh, at the email address you can see on your screen in English, French, or Spanish, if you have any questions on the process. Otherwise, we look forward very much to uh, your participation today and to seeing how together we can make IWRM a key part of your country's sustainable development. So thank you very much. Um, now I would like to go on to the next slide and explain the next sec uh, section of the um, session today, which is listening to two country experiences of um, how an IWRM action plan has been relevant to those countries in advancing on IWRM. The first case we will listen to is from Guatemala. So I'd like to uh, hand over to the, the video and uh, please run. Muy buen día. Es un gusto saludarles en esta mañana y agradecerles la invitación para participar en esta reunión sobre experiencias en la elaboración de planes de acción para la gestión integral del recurso hídrico. De todos es conocido la importancia que tiene el agua para el mantenimiento de los ecosistemas, sobre todo es un derecho esencial para la vida y la dignidad de los seres humanos, siendo reconocido en julio del año 2010 por la Asamblea General de las Naciones Unidas. 
el acceso básico al agua y saneamiento como un derecho humano. Por tanto, su conservación es una tarea de todos, considerando los diferentes usos que se le pueda dar a dicho recurso. El país cuenta con una disponibilidad hídrica importante, sin embargo, no está en el lugar que se necesita o de calidad que se requiere, por lo que es necesario realizar acciones que permitan contar con agua de buena calidad y en cantidad suficiente. El mar, con el acompañamiento de GWP y con la participación de Plan, en octubre del año 2017 realizó un taller para el establecimiento de la línea base de la meta 6.5.1 grado de implementación de la gestión integrada de los recursos hídricos y posteriormente en el año 2019 se elaboraron acciones estratégicas en respuesta a los desafíos de la gestión integral del recurso hídrico a través de varios talleres interinstitucionales produciéndose un primer borrador de estrategias en el año 2020. Se realizó la primera evaluación de avances de la implementación de la gestión integral del recurso hídrico. Con esta propuesta de política también se aspira a actualizar y elaborar nuevas normativas relacionadas con las descargas de aguas residuales para reducir la contaminación del recurso hídrico, incidir en el que el goce, uso y aprovechamiento se realicen de manera racional, así como promover la implementación del Acuerdo Gobernativo número 19-2021, disposiciones para promover la protección y conservación de las cuencas hidrográficas de la República de Guatemala, que tiene como objeto establecer disposiciones generales que permitan al Ministerio de Ambiente y Recursos Naturales, con el apoyo del Ministerio de Agricultura, Ganadería y Alimentación y Ministerio de Energía y Minas, dentro del ámbito de su competencia, promover la protección, conservación de las cuencas hidrográficas de toda la República de Guatemala, mediante un proceso continuo que permita elaborar y o actualizar diagnósticos de cuenca como base para la implementación de planes de manejo de recursos naturales enfocados en resolver problemas de degradación ambiental. Por otra parte, por instrucciones del ministro Rojas Espino, se creó e institucionalizó el viceministerio del agua, cuya función principal será ejecutar todas las acciones relacionadas con el recurso hídrico, así como la implementación de la política nacional del recurso hídrico en Guatemala. Esperamos que en un futuro cercano se puedan ver los resultados de todas las acciones que este ministerio está realizando en pro del mejoramiento del recurso hídrico y para que el país avance en la implementación de la gestión integral del recurso hídrico. Es importante destacar que el Ministerio de Ambiente y Recursos Naturales agradece el apoyo de instituciones como GWP y está anuente a continuar trabajando en conjunto con la finalidad de que se logren mejores resultados. Considero que este tipo de reuniones constituyen una valiosa oportunidad para identificar las prioridades regionales, así como brindar un espacio de discusión en los temas relacionados, así como alianzas, intercambio de experiencias y soluciones de diversos contextos y apoyos necesarios para el logro de las metas. Les expreso mi deseo porque tengamos el mejor de los éxitos durante la jornada que seguramente traerá grandes beneficios para nuestros países. Muchas gracias. Excellent. Thanks uh, for that video and uh, for sharing the experience from Guatemala. And the next experience and the final one we will hear for the moment is from Vietnam. So I'd like to uh, see if we can hear directly from Vietnam what the water related challenges have been and how the IWRM action plan is helping to face them. Vietnam's abundant water endowment has shaped its development fortunes. With nearly 3,500 rivers of more than 10 kilometers in length, spread across 16 major river basins, and with plentiful rainfall, almost 2,000 millimeters a year, the country is rich in water resources. There are, however, risks inherent in the water resource. With about 10,200 cubic meters of renewable fresh water per capita, 
Vietnam's water availability is high by regional and global standards, though these resources are unevenly distributed across the country and seasons. In addition, two-thirds of Vietnam's water is transboundary and so is beyond its direct management. Vietnam is also vulnerable to water's great destructive power, with more than 70% of the population at risk from water-related natural disasters. It is one of the most hazard-prone countries in the East Asia and Pacific region, with a growing pattern of alternating flood and drought. The institutional and governance framework for water resources management has been established and evolved over time in response to the growing challenges of the water sector. Two decades ago, the government adopted integrated water resource management as the basis for water resources planning, development and management. For example, the 2012 law on water resources mandates this approach. The National Strategy on Water Resources to 2020 confirms that water resource management must be implemented in an integrated manner on a river basin basis. Vietnam has adopted an integrated water resource management approach, but faces challenges to implement the approach. Establishment of a basin level planning and management committee, but the power is limited. The legal and regulatory framework for integrated water resource management has been established and is gradually being improved, but it is not fully implemented in practice. Data on water resource management remains limited and fragmented, and some economic instruments have been introduced, but implementation and incentive mechanisms remain limited. In September 2015, countries adopted a set of 17 sustainable development goals to end poverty, protect the planet and ensure prosperity for all. Target 6.5 Water Resources Management In order to achieve Target 6.5 Water Resources Management in Vietnam The development of Integrated Water Resource Action Plan is necessary and urgent. Creating a strategic direction for integrated water resource management implementation at all levels. This is the forum for policy, strategies, plans, legal and regulatory frameworks for integrated water resource management and for achieving target 6.5 by 2030. Promoting the participation and coordination of all stakeholders at all levels to implement integrated water resources management. Raising awareness and understanding of stakeholders about Vietnam's water resources in general and integrated water resources management in particular increasing efficiency of water use in both quality and quantity, increasing water productivity, mitigating water-related disasters, especially floods, droughts, and adapt to the impacts of climate change, mobilizing all resources, human, financial, and participation of stakeholders for the implementation of integrated water resources management. Okay, that was excellent to see those two perspectives. I just wanted to mention that the one from Guatemala was from the Deputy Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Um, Mr. Uh, Freddy, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for the name here. Um, Mr. Freddy Chedoy, I'm sorry, uh, pronunciation. And um, the, uh, the one from Vietnam uh, was also from uh, 
appropriate high level officials from the government. So we are very pleased to see this level of commitment from the government towards uh, integrating IWRM into their sustainable development approach. Now, we will uh, go to a group activity, which will allow all of you to look into the challenges and opportunities at the national level. And to explain the dynamics, I would like to hand over to Anna Pierobon, who is the S SDG Program Associate for GWP here in Stockholm. Hello, everybody, and thank you for uh, coming here today. Uh, we're now going to shift gears a little bit and start these breakout groups to gather your input and what your thoughts are around IWM action plans and their implementation. So the activity is divided in two separate parts. The first part, you'll be led by a facilitator and a note taker in answering the first question, which is what are the main challenges when planning for and implementing an IWRM action plan? Thereafter, in the second part of this activity, you will also have the opportunity to discuss with your colleagues from all around the world on how these challenges can be overcome together. So without further ado, I will uh, paste the questions in the chat and uh, give back the mic to, to Colin to send us to our groups. Okay, thanks Anna. And just to mention that we will have 25 minutes for the breakout groups. And in each group, we will have a facilitator and a Miro artist who will guide you through the process. So without further ado, uh, could you please uh, tech hosts, take us to cyberspace and see some of you on the other side. Okay, so now we're back from cyberspace. Um, I hope you found that really interesting and uh, you had a great opportunity to interact with your peers from uh, all over the world. Um, certainly the breakout group that I was on had a huge degree of interest and enthusiasm. Uh, now I would like to ask each of the groups to uh, present back briefly on their main findings. Uh, I will give each group two minutes, and I will be very strict on timing, so uh, please don't tempt me. Um, and I would like to start by asking our tech host if we can share the Miro board and calling upon group one. Um, I can't see who the uh, rapporteur is, Molly. Yes, Molly, would you like to report back, please? A couple of highlights from your group in two minutes, please. Yeah, thank you very much. I will be quicker than two minutes to give a moment if any group members want to add further. Um, but thanks very much. It was a good discussion, uh, a number of overlapping uh, experiences. I think the main points to come out first were engagement. So we had some exchange on, of, of course, we all know tough to engage, but then um, often, you know, so you see engagement when you're designing an IWM process, but the follow-up and especially certain parts of the follow-up like regulation or working with certain sectors, um, particular stakeholders can be challenging. Um, we talked about commitment to the challenges around that as well. Um, and then we discussed a number of different uh, tiers of governance and how they interact. For instance, in Brazil's case where you have, you know, governance arrangements at the state, face in um, a national level and the difficulty of those talking to one another. Um, third, um, we were we discussed uh, the, the role of technical bodies and, and where they come in in, in the IWM process 
and how in, in a certain case that was raised, um, fragile they can be, but how important they can be as well. Um, so we raised some questions about how, how that could be best managed. Um, and then some interesting cases um, around uh, from Trinidad around an adopt a river program to help people really engage at a basin level um, and a continuous level and include communities. And a second recommendation um, to keep meetings periodic and so to keep meetings happening uh, to keep people engaged, really structure that well. That's it. Anyone else from my group want to comment either in um, verbally or in the chat? So welcome. Um, Molly, uh, thanks so much for that. Um, I'd like to ask if there are any other comments from your group that perhaps they could put them in the chat uh, just in the interest of time so that we can uh, give each of the groups uh, an equal two minutes, if that's OK. Um, so uh, and I think there were a lot of points from your group that I also heard in uh, the group that I was in. So I'd like to ask the rapporteurs of the different groups to uh, not repeat what's already been said, but to try to look for different challenges and solutions from your group that haven't yet been mentioned. So with that in mind, I'd like to hand over to group number two, which was facilitated by Gargana, um, who is the uh, rapporteur, Maria Cecilia Soriano. Maria Cecilia. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah, thank you for making it bigger. So the, the challenges include the getting the attention of the top policymakers uh, in government, especially, but also with the private uh, sector. So um, policy and institutional fragmentation leading to conflicting priorities or sometimes uh, conflicting uh, policies, and then turf protection and uh, political direction and priority changes. And also because of the turf protection, the getting the baseline data or consistent data is also a major problem, especially with transboundary um, <clears throat> situations. And also the enforcement of, uh, if ever there are plans, uh, enforcement and monitoring is also a problem. And also uh, the getting the financial and human resources to carry out the plans. Just to add, for the private sector, they see it more as a CSR, uh, rather than um, part of their water operations and services. So solutions would include uh, unity and persistence on the part of the water sector champions, which includes having a coordinator or, or an honest broker to avoid the silos and turf protection that exists in the water sector. And also um, the support of the development partners can play a key role in convincing the top level government to give attention to water as a main objective. Um, tying the IWRM and good water management with the COVID-19 recovery. I guess now with the COVID, everybody's told to wash their hands. So obviously they need water you know, all over the country. So that's a good, it, it's an opportunity for us to advance the water um, a priority. And then, um, Yes, using CRS to implement uh, IWRM and having a good network, constant dialogue among the sectors would, you know, convince the private sector to include water, not just in their CRS. And the capacity building of uh, local water utilities is very, very important for them to get the financial resources from government and private banks. So capacity building and financial sustainability and ultimately service delivery are all connected with one another. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Maria. Cecilia, that was excellent. And uh, again, I'm seeing a lot of parallels with the different conversations that I've heard so far today. Um, and uh, I'd like to now turn over to our third group, which uh, was facilitated by Valentin. Um, and I see that the rapporteur will be Fanny, who is awake very late at night for him in Indonesia. So, Fanny, you okay. have two minutes, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Colin. So, hi, everybody. So, this is our uh, group discussion result. So, first, the challenges. So, the challenges is the, the top down approach. It's not the top down, the, uh, the top down from uh, as, as you see, but uh, the uh, IWM action plan seems to be owned by the government. So therefore, all the initiative come from the government. This is what we meant by top down. But actually, if you want to build a multi-secular action plan, this should not be only coming from the government, but 
it has to be coming from everybody. So this is one. And then uh, this is already mentioned by the other group, the lack of political will. So we'll not uh, explain anymore. Uh, financing is also another uh, challenge that we have because in order to design this uh, action plan, then we need to uh, uh, we need to have uh, some support. And then uh, cross-cutting issues not uh, not not coordinated. So this is actually uh, very ironic because we are trying to develop what we call integrated water resource management. But if the other sector is not uh, coordinated, that that means it, this is not integrated. So this is also related to the second uh, the the next point: the lack of knowledge on IWRM. So. The understanding of IWRM is uh, various uh, in uh, depending on how people uh, understand uh, from what they read or from what they experience. But uh, what we understand, the challenge is that with this different kind of definition understanding, then it really blur the actual uh, uh, goal of IWRM. And then uh, data is also not accessible uh, beyond the concerned authority. So these are the challenges. And the, for the solution, we propose uh, uh, for the top down, we propose to develop an open program. This is something that we in the Southeast Asia has been uh, developing uh, through our core activity. And then also, of course, for the black pol political will, we want to engage uh, with the focal points and then uh, to have also one entity uh, with strong legal mandate to work with WRM. And for the data, uh, we want to propose to have a central data repository. So that will be from our side. Thank you. Excellent. Bani, thank you so much. Uh, bang on time as well as always. And I see a lot of uh, innovative ideas there, which uh, I think could be shared with other regions. And that is exactly the reason why we are here today. Um, so to hear our next group, um, Nisbet, you will be reporting back on behalf of this group. You have two minutes, please. Thank you, Colin. Yes, um, great discussion we had from across the globe in our group. Um, so uh, many of the points have already been highlighted by some of the other groups. So I'll quickly go through the most interesting ones that we had. Um, convincing different stakeholders from different sectors to actually be involved in IWRM planning was uh, one of the challenges, including private sector, uh, as someone else mentioned. But also another challenge now that they have found is actually the potential of meetings due to COVID. People cannot meet face to face anymore to do any of this planning. And while we're used to meeting online now, there's some questions about inclusivity and exclusivity of, me of moving these kind of things to an online forum. So that was an interesting point that we had raised. Um, also in terms of from the lessons from Vietnam, we saw the video um, issues in data sharing, which have already come up, um, issues in the practicality of implementing plans that have been put in place, um, sometimes related to the power of actual river basin commissions or those authorities which are then mandated to implement the plans. Um, and of course, economic challenges were also brought up. So some of the interesting solutions that uh, we discussed was about how can we actually do a holistic approach whereby we're not only thinking about water, but also health now that we have the COVID pandemic. It shouldn't be that water planning is paused now because we're focusing on something else. As you mentioned, SDG 6 is at the center of all the other SDGs. So we need to make sure that even in those other forums, water management and IWM is coming up. Um, and then with regards to data, we were discussing the challenges is also that sometimes data is private and that potentially making sure that this kind of data is open source and as accessible to everyone in order to, to not have these bottlenecks um, between different sectors, different actors. Um, so those were some of the main interesting points that we had, Colin. Excellent. Thanks, Lisbeth. Very, very good points and bang on time as well with the two minutes. Um, so this is uh, very interesting. We're seeing a lot of uh, ideas and a lot of positive energy as well. Um, next group was Damian uh, from CapNet. Damian, please, uh, your two minutes start now. Um, good morning. Hi. Oh, sorry. Um, um, the reporter was Andrea. Sorry. That's okay. Um, so with many of the things that we discuss are have already been discussed. So I'll go very quickly through our, our responses. So um, some of the things that haven't been mentioned is the lack of gender inclusion related to the water policy. 
And uh, we talked about the, uh, the links that need to be made between local gov uh, governments and private uh, sector, the public and the private sector. And also that when we talk about water resources, um, we also have to focus on other environmental resources that are based on a, a holistic view of the management of the resources. And um, we talked about the example here in Guatemala that we do have some political wellness because now we're working on new policies and laws and we are working on the new vice ministry for water management exclusively. So that's um, something that um, differed from the other groups. And according to the solution, we, we talked about um, updating the laws and policies related to water, water management, uh, giving more resources to municipalities that are in charge of the water um, and sanitation regulation, um, having more participation from the labor uh, units and organizations so they can also be part of this uh, holistic view. And um, also we talked about the importance of the link between the employers and the employees for the implementation of this um, water management um, policies. And we talked about the importance of legal and governance background in order to in implement those policies and strategic plans. And we also talked about how important it is that along with the policy, it has to become, it has to have its own, its own action plan. So it can be implemented um, and be effective and not just uh, a document, but something that can be taken into action. Andrea, thank you so much for that. And that last point, I think, really um, hits the nail on the head in terms of what we need to do here. Uh, it's not just about defining a plan. It's really about implementing that. Yeah. So um, that's excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, now passing over to our next group, I believe it's Fabiola that's going to be reporting back to the group. Is that the one? Yes, I think this is... Uh, okay, yes. <laughs> Fabiola, Thank please. you, Colin. Okay, so I'm going to try to be brief. Uh, then, so so some of the comments uh, regarding the challenges were that uh, the plans um, are to focus on on water resources, but that we should also seek the engagement of those other sectors that should be involved in the preparation of the plans, but also in the implementation of the plans. And, and sometimes they are part of the design of these types of plans, but once we are in the implementation phase, there is not real engagement in, in implementing uh, these, these plans from these, those other sectors. Um, financing was also a, a challenge that was a, a mentioned, and it is sometimes this uh, deals with competencies between different uh, agendas and sectors at national level. So it's sometimes hard to compete with other priorities. Um, uh, also human resources, uh, there is a financial challenge, but also sometimes we need also to strengthen the human resources and the technical capacities at country level in order to uh, design and implement the plans. Um, sustainability was also an issue that, that was mentioned how we make sure that the plans are prepared and that they are adopted as a long-term tool that is going to guide their, their prioritization and the implementation of actions uh, along uh, the years. Uh, so this is something also that, that needs to be taken into consideration. And, and when the uh, government changes, of course, so you need to, uh, again, uh, divulgate the instrument, let the new uh, authorities and the new staff uh, get to know this uh, this this uh, instrument, so they are aware and they support the implementation of, of them. So that would be some of the challenges that were shared in the in the group. Then some of the solutions. Sorry, to have... Fabiola, the, yes. the two minutes are up. Um, okay. If you could just perhaps briefly share one solution quickly. Maybe I, I don't know. I, I don't know if, if this was shared already, but uh, the uh, establishment of monitoring schemes with uh, the plan that can uh, allow us to, to monitor the implementation with indicators. And then I think the others were already mentioned, but maybe I just want to, to, to share one last, is the importance of, 
of following up on the uh, monitoring of SDG 6.5 also as a tool and in the facilitation process in order to make sure that these, uh, uh, these are implemented at country level. Excellent. Thank you so much, Fabiola. Um, and this gets harder as we go through the different groups. Uh, the last one um, now has a mission impossible, uh, and that will be me to report back on behalf of a very rich group. We had uh, Nicaragua, Panama, Guatemala, Brazil, Ecuador, and Mexico presented, uh, represented the group. Um, in general, I think a lot of what we have already heard was said in our group. One particular aspect that I wanted to mention is that we, we highlighted the lack of political will, but also the need to avoid politicization of the um, IWRM actions. Um, we mentioned that in Latin America in particular, the changes uh, with every change of government can be uh, quite drastic. So we need to make sure that uh, our actions are not changed with the government. Um, it's a very important aspect. Uh, uh, and in fact, uh, each of the challenges we really turned into a solution. And we felt that the solution for that particular challenge is about having a multi-stakeholder, a multi-annual commitment. Um, if the international organizations and the private sector and academic organizations and um, local governments are all committing to actions, then it will be much more difficult for any changing government to affect their implementation. Um, in terms of um, funding, that was one of the other key um, aspects that was highlighted. And there are some innovative financial schemes that could be shared between countries. Um, and finally, just in the last few seconds, uh, data. Uh, we recognize that data is one of the big issues that's lacking, but we also felt that even with um, data that we can recognize its deficiencies, uh, we, we can still move ahead. We shouldn't use bad data as an excuse for inaction. And I think there are enough actions that we can commit to together, which makes sense in, no matter what the order of magnitude of the problem may be. So those are my two minutes and my alarm is going off to tell me that. Um, uh, with that, that's the end of the breakout reporting back. Uh, thank you so much to all of you. We will make sure that we share with all participants the summary of today and the visualization of the breakout groups. Um, but now to uh, change dynamic a little bit, I would like to hand over to uh, my colleague, Carlos Martinez, who will take us through uh, a closing poll to uh, capture your uh, pulse uh, at the close of this meeting. Carlos. Thank you, Colin. Um, We'll do three exercises, uh, closing exercises using the Polyp uh, instrument. So please go to the chat and you can activate the, the Polyp again, or you can type it in the, your browser, polyp.com slash GWP. And the first question will be, uh, the first exercise is, please provide us with one to three words that summarizes your experience about today's session. We want to know what, uh, what do you think about this exercise? Uh, what, what is your impression? And surely we'll use this information to better this experience uh, uh, in, in, in following events. So please uh, go to the chat and click on, the, on, on that link again. So we can start uh, seeing your answers, please. Now the poll is open. So we, we don't see any answers yet. Okay, the poll is now open. Sorry for the delay. Okay. We can see some, some of the words. Uh, it's an interactive experience, good sharing of information, enlightening, good information sharing. Well, we have very positive words here, so 
uh, we feel, feel happy that you uh, are feeling your ex expectation with this event. And this is probably just the beginning of events of this nature. So uh, we, we really feel excited that uh, we're reaching this uh, goal of sharing good information with all of you. Sharing uh, inspiring information, aprendizaje, excelente, great knowledge. Carlos, I think now perhaps we can go on to the next question. Sure, sure. Please, uh, maybe James can, can give us the next poll. And the next poll is what would you like to see in an online course of IWRN action plan? So uh, GWP is, pre is preparing a, a training course related to uh, IWRM action planning. And we want to know what do you think this training should have in it that uh, will fulfill your expectation? So maybe instrument procedures, experiences uh, that, that can enhance the training course for you and your expectations for, we have uh, solutions for IWRM capacity building and access to financing, lesson learned, case studies, uh, very important to, to learn how to access funding for IWRM. This is a very crucial activity. Real life examples and how they are tackled. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, people, is getting to value the experience that exists in other countries that can help you. Practical solution, exchange programming with other countries, like videos, like case study. We, we have seen an example today. Uh, probably we have many, many of these examples coming in the future. Are we ready for the next? Yeah, I think so. And I also okay. want to mention briefly that the, the next event in this series of learning exchange events will be focused on resource mobilization for IWRM. So many of those comments that we've received, um, we will be glad to follow up on them. Sure. Now, this last uh, exercise has to do with the community of practice. So if you would like to continue sharing this information and getting in touch with other people, getting to know what they are doing and how they are doing it. Uh, well, we believe a community of practice uh, will be uh, good for uh, getting this, uh, this goal. So please give us your input if you're willing to join a community of practice of this type. And if you're thinking you know, uh, to join it or not sure, also tell us and we'll keep in touch with all of you to see how it is coming uh, uh, around. Okay, we have many yeses here, definitely. So people, uh, the sense is that people are really interested in, in joining a community of this type. It will be great to create a weekly or monthly meeting. Uh, yes, it, it, I think it, it is very important to have that uh, touch Constantly, permanently. Yes, we are interested. We need case studies at national and national and basin level. And yes, but they has it has to be very interactive. And just to highlight that the community of practice would be online. So uh, everyone can take part in their own time zone and at their own speed. Um, we will follow up with all of you afterwards about the community. Yeah. So don't feel pressured into saying yes now. Somebody says more time, please. I, I, I believe he wants to say that this is too short to, to share information. But that's perhaps a, a very good reaction also that people is very interested in learning in following this uh, type of events. 
Thanks, Carlos. Yes. Perhaps now we could close the, the poll for the moment, um, and but we're not closing the dialogue, which is the important part. Um, so thank okay. you. Back, back to you, Tron. And um, thanks. And I think we um, will be very keen to continue this conversation. And from what I'm seeing on the screen, so are many of you very keen to continue this conversation beyond today. So we will make sure that that is possible. Um, and that we can together learn about how best to implement IWRM. Um, so with this, I would like to hand over to the CEO of the Global Water Partnership, uh, Dario Soto Abril, uh, who will give us some uh, brief closing remarks. Dario, over to you. Thank you, Colin. Let me check if my camera is open as well. Uh, is it, can you guys see me start my video? Yes, perfect. Hello to everybody and thank you, Colin, to, uh, for this invitation today. Um, Colin, first of all, to you, my appreciation to you and the entire EWP team for putting this uh, activity together. I know this is the second, and maybe the audience doesn't know, but this is the second webinar that you guys are running in the same day. Uh, so it's been a, quite a handful day for you. So uh, my appreciation to you and thank you also to all of the, you have, who have joined this uh, webinar for your active participation in does really mean a lot to us and i hope that you have enjoyed this event as much as we from the wp have done it um i also want to thank you uh, uh, to thank our partners uh, who are supporting iwrm and it's the number six uh, namely unep and unep dhi center and the UNDP, undp capnet uh, i always have problems saying undp capnet so thank you very much also for supporting this and for uh, bringing us a little bit closer towards uh, reaching the objectives of the SDG program. I want to finally also take note of something that Colin mentioned um, early in the, in the presentation for, for the SDG program and for us to achieve the different SDG uh, target under 6.5, uh, SDG 6.5, sorry. Um, it will require for us to implement at a rate that is double the current rate of progress around the world, which means that we do have a big, big, big challenge. Uh, and you probably know this better than I do in terms of engaging and motivating other actors, bringing new people to the table, co uh, collaborating more across countries and regions, and really, really to raise awareness of what's happening with, uh, with IWRM and with uh, in the results of SDG at number 6.5. We do have some ideas that we're putting in place and in this notion of collaboration and replication, as you've heard already, we are putting together this online, online training course on IWRM action planning. Uh, this is gonna be launched in July and we really appreciate that not only would you join, but you involve or uh, disseminate news about this uh, online training course with others who might not be so knowledgeable about IWRM. It's important that as many people and practitioners as possible join uh, this kind of uh, opportunities and activities. Um, and I also think that uh, we would like to encourage you uh, to continue working in expanding this community of practice and to share experiences and lessons learned. Um, you know, I, I always tell Colin that, you know, one of the challenges that we have is just seems to be always the same people coming to the same conversations. And that is great to, to have this energy. And where we also need to do is as a homework, invite others, bring other practitioners, bring uh, people from NGOs, from the private sector, from the government who might not be so involved so that they get the benefits of learning about what we're doing. Uh, so that I believe for all of us as homework, we need to keep expanding this community of practitioners and practice on IWRM. And again, my, my gratitude to all of you and also my call for action, uh, paraphrasing calling, we do need to double uh, the current rate of progress on IWRM around the world if we want to meet the, the targets of SDG 6.5. So anything that we can all do together and continue doing it going forward um, is, is not only appreciated, but it's really, really up to us. So with that words, and again, my recognition to the team and to all of you for joining, uh, thank you very much. And I wish you the best Thank you, Dario, and thank you to all of you. So with that, we close the session for today. Um, have a great evening, a great uh, afternoon, or a great day, depending on where you are.
and take care of yourselves, please. Thank you. Goodbye.